do you have any idea what these two items next to me might be? Both of them are hollow. They would hold about two gallons of liquid and they both have a handle. If any of you guessed that this was one of the earliest forms of firefighting technology, you'd be right. Hi, I'm Emma, and these are two fire buckets from the collection of Historic Northampton. Now you might be asking yourself, what is a fire bucket? If my house is on fire, I would just call the fire department. But what happens if there is no fire department? The United States didn't have widespread professional fire departments until the 1870s. But what about fighting fire before automotive technology, before the ability to pump water out of an engine, and even before the invention of the hose? A fire bucket is what's used in a bucket brigade. A bucket brigade would form a line from the closest well or cistern or pump to the house that was on fire. And they would have lots of buckets like these, and they would fill a bucket in the pump, pass it down the line, and then throw it on the fire and pass the empty buckets back down a second line to be refilled. For centuries, these buckets were our first line of defense to fight a fire in a time when many buildings were made of wood and uh, were very flammable. That's why these buckets are made out of leather, because leather didn't catch fire as easily as wood. It wasn't always easy to get the water from the source to the fire. Northampton didn't have its own waterworks until the 1870s, so moving water effectively through manual means, like a bucket brigade, was especially important. In terms of who would use these, the short answer is everyone. If you were an early 19th century resident of Northampton, you would have a few of these in your house at all times. In many places, it was actually the law, and you could be fined if you didn't have them. They'd probably be in the front room of your house. When the call went out that one of your neighbor's homes was on fire, you would pick up one of these and throw it either out the door or out your window into the street so that the people forming a bucket brigade could use it to fight the fire. If you look at the size of these buckets, they hold between two and three gallons of water, which is pretty standard, but you might be thinking you can't really put out a fire with that amount of water, and you would be correct. The point of bucket brigade firefighting isn't necessarily to put out the fire, it's to suppress the fire. So what you really want is to be able to get everyone who's in danger out of the house, and then if you can keep suppressing the fire, to go back in to get the most valuable objects that are still in the house, like a linen chest or a bed. Communities like Northampton also bought ladders and strategically placed them around town so that they could be used in a fire. And that's really an effort that's driven by your neighbors. Uh, as time went on, neighbors organized and became volunteer firefighting companies. This is about the 1830s. Regular people who volunteered to respond to different fires. These fire departments sometimes had their own buckets, which they would carry on a long pole that was strung through these loops, and they would bring them to the sites of the fire. In the 1870s, these volunteer fire departments were then replaced by professional fire departments. So these are people who were paid to fight fires. And that is sort of the beginning of the system that we have today. These buckets have been used for centuries. There are instances of them in the Great Fire of London in the 1600s. But by the time that these two buckets would have been made, they were getting a little bit old fashioned. The fire hose was invented in 1807. And by the 1830s, there was more municipal water supplies and engines that pumped water. So it was easier to build a pump engine where the hand motion on the side of the engine is what would propel water into the fire rather than the motion of pouring the bucket onto the fire. The other really interesting feature of these fire buckets is their decoration. It was pretty common for New England fire buckets to have decoration. In fact, these are a little tame. They could have even more colors and more designs. They might have pictures of fire, pictures of the American flag, all kinds of patterns on them. One of the most important features of it was the name. After the fire was put out, you wanted to be able to get your bucket back. In order to prove it was yours, you had to have your name on it. These are really special to us because they were used in Northampton. In fact, this one was used in this house. 
The I, Damon, on this bucket stands for Isaac Damon. He built Damon House, where historic Northampton is located. So this bucket doesn't just have a long history with Northampton, it has a long history with us.